Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily texture a um, full body model using one of our high resolution animation ready retopologized body scans. The scan we're going to be using is this guy, uh, Mail 12, and he's available on our scan store. I'll put a link in the description. And the sculpt that we're going to be using is Samak Roshani's uh, bodybuilder model, which is available here on his website edgeloop.com. So the first thing we're going to want to do is um, transfer this scan, which is one of our um, retopologized male scans, um, onto this sculpt, which has been very kindly donated. Very kindly donated by Sam Akrashini. Um, you can check out his work on his um, art station and his website, and I'll put links to that in the description below. So, as with the head tutorials, basically the process here is we're going to wrap this model onto this model and then transfer the details across. And so we'll get all the really nice details that we've got in this scan, um, all the nice sort of skin and pore details. They're all going to be transferred across onto this sculpt. And currently the sculpt, um, you know, it's a decimated model. It doesn't have a huge amount of detail. Um, so we will be able to detail this model quite a lot more than it is currently using the scan store. We apologize, body scans. So what we're going to do first of all is export this as an OBJ. So we'll just take the body model down to the lowest subdivision level and we'll hit export. And I'll just make a folder and we'll call it wrap. I'll just call that scan, it's fine. And now we're going to export the sculpt. We'll call that bodybuilder sculpt. Right, so now we'll just uh, fire up wrap and we'll load in our two models. So, very simple again load geometry node, wrap. We'll load first of all the scan. And then we will load the sculpt. So it looks like the sculpt is slightly off center, and it's not a problem at all. We'll just work with it like this. So I'll just rename these so I know what they are. Scan sculpt. Okay. So now we want to create a um, point selection node. So we'll do uh, select point pairs. And again, always keeping the thing that you want to deform on the left hand side. So put the scan in the left node and the sculpt in the right node. And now we can open up the, uh, the visual editor and just start placing points. Um, I've done this a thousand times before, so I'll sort of quickly do a few and then I'll speed this video up. So again, just picking um, landmark positions, features on the face. I'm going to switch on the sync views, which Makes it a lot easier to navigate inside of the eyes, outside of the eyes. Okay, so there we have all the points that we're going to need. Um, I've put quite a lot on the hands here, as you probably saw in the time lapse. Um, and I've just added a few extra ones to the face that I forgot to put in at the beginning. So I've just put in a few more around the nose. Um, I might actually just put another one in here, just on the bottom of the mouth. Nope, oh, it's not like me. Just do the same here. Sometimes the ray casting gets a bit screwed up in wrap. Points don't quite work, you need to sort of zoom in and zoom out again to get them to place. There we go. Cool, might just put a few in his nostrils. 
don't know why this happens with arrays. It seems to happen when you have a lot more points. There we go. So that's all we're going to need really, just the major landmarks um, and hands and feet, sort of knuckle joints and things like that. So now we will go ahead and, well actually before we wrap we need to um, mask off some areas that we don't want to wrap. So we'll do a select polygon node. We will put the scan into that. What we want to do is select the, um, the mouth bag because we don't want that wrapping. So just turn the wireframe back on. So I'm just going to select a loop by just shift and double clicking the poly next to it. And we're just going to grow that all the way until we can see that inside it's selected the whole of the mouth bag. And then we're just going to shrink that down now. Until we get something like that. And we're going to hide that selection. And then we're going to do the same for the eyes. Oops. Try to get a loop. There we go. And just grow that again until we get all the inside of the eyes and then shrink it down. Something like that and just hide that selection. And now in order to select those objects you double click the object, the mesh to select the whole thing, unhide all and then do an invert and that will select just the eyes and the mouth. Now we're going to do our wrap, so let's go to alignment and wrapping. And we'll plug our select polygons into the poly selection, plug our points into the point correspondence, scan into the first one and sculpt into the second one. And now we just hit compute. That'll go ahead and do its thing. There we go. So now we have our wrapped scan and obviously there's going to be some issues here like this and like around the eyes where everything's a bit screwed up. It hasn't quite got it right. <coughs> so to fix these areas I'm going to use the clone tool which is a really cool um, tool that the wrap comes with. So in geometry, go to sorry the brush tool um, and I want to use the clone rather than the relax project. What that does is actually pull the polygons back into the similar position to the original, um, the original sort of uh, retopologized mesh. So in the first node, we're going to put the geometry, which is the wrapped geometry. In the second node, we're going to put the reference object, which is the um, the actual sculpt itself. And then in the third one. We want the geometry source, which again is going to be the actual scan. So we're going to put that in there. And now when we go into our visual editor and we click the clone tool, we can actually use the clone tool to sort of morph the polygons back into their original kind of positions. Um, you can use a relax project, but I find this to be a bit more accurate. Um, because it keeps the original poly flow of the um, of the scanned mesh, which is pretty cool. It's great for things like eyes. You can see this bit's really screwed up here. Um, so we just do that, and it'll just bring it all back. By comparison, let me just show you what Relax Project does. See, so that screws up and does all sorts of weird things. Um, Clone will actually reference the uh, the source geometry, which is really really cool. So I'm just going to go over the whole model, just fixing any sort of errors that I see. Um, again, I'll speed this bit up again, so it's, it's a bit boring. Okay, so that's the uh, fixed model with the um, the brush alterations using the clone tool. Um, so you can see we've got really nice topology now flowing everywhere um, correctly as it was in the original mesh. Um, just do a little bit. The, the mouth here hasn't quite wrapped to the um, the position of the um, 
the scan as you can see there so we could fix this here just by using the move tools or I can do it in ZBrush um, I might just try using the uh, move tool here just to tweak it a little bit just before I take it into ZBrush I'm going to turn on geodesic distance so it doesn't actually affect the um, top of the lip which is quite handy as well so we can kind of pull that into position I mean we'll probably tweak that in ZBrush as well to be honest because we're going to have to do some projections so when we're doing those it's going to screw all this up anyway but just for the sake of getting the source as good as possible I'll just tweak it a bit here and I think I'll just do a little bit of a clone fix on that inner mouth there or side of the mouth sort that geometry out there we go so that's that so once that's done we'll just hit the apply tool the apply button sorry and that'll apply those changes to the mesh and now we want to export this so we will just right click and save geometry and we'll just go to um, folder we'll just call it wrapped and save that Okay, so that's it for the wrapping section. Now we're going to go into ZBrush and um, replace our mesh and start doing some projections. Right, so now we're back in ZBrush and we've got our scan and our sculpt. And what we want to do is replace the lowest level of our scan, which has got all our nice skin details on it, with the wrapped model that we've just exported. So we'll drop this guy down to level zero and we will import the scan, or the wrapped mesh, sorry. Um, wrap wrapped and that will simply replace that model and we'll still retain all the subdivision levels with all the details on it so there we have the wrapped mesh with all the skin details from the the scan still intact now what we need to do is we need to project this model onto the sculpt to get all the nice sculptural details that Somax put in here. Um, the problem that we're going to have is if we project this model with these details straight onto this model we're going to lose all of the nice skin pore details because it's going to project this basically so what we need to do is put these skin pores onto a layer of their own which we can then switch off and then do the projection and then switch them back on at the end and that way we won't actually destroy them during the projection process. So the simplest way to do this is simply to store a morph target on the highest level and then just very, very quickly using a, a big sort of brush, just smooth the face out, just smooth everything out, smooth all these details off the mesh um, just using the smooth tool. So this is going to take me a little while, so I'm just going to speed this part of the video up because it's quite boring. Okay, so now that we have removed all of the skin details using the smooth brush, what we want to do now is put those details onto a layer. So we have a morph target here that if we switch between them, we've got skin details on and skin details off. So to transfer that to a layer, simply make a new layer, call it skin details, and then simply switch to turn the details on. So now whenever we ramp this layer up and down it's going to at zero it's going to have no details and then when it's at one it's going to have all the skin details back on the model so this means when we start doing our projections now we can do them with the skin details turned off and it won't actually destroy them whenever we come back to turn them on at the end. So I said before there's going to be a few issues with projection um, when we do this like the mouth for example wasn't in the right position so we're going to do a few fixes now and you can see here as well around the eyes there's some um, sort of wrapping errors here so we're just going to fix these little areas first so we'll just go down to the little subdivision level <coughs> and we'll just put the scan on in the background 
or the stop tool in the background. And I'm just going to do a little bit of fixing just using manual sort of brushes just to try and even that area out a bit and get it in the right place. Kind of help to turn the texture on here so you can actually see what you're doing. But I'm just going to do it like this. You can see this bit's completely hasn't projected at all. This sort of upper lid here. So this we might get this in the projection. So I'll just fix this area first. Yeah. So I'm going to try and get it as close as possible before we start doing any projection work. I could use the Z project tool as well. Oops. Why is it projecting some RGB values? Again on this side I've got some Gonna give them a bit of a lid there just so we can the projection might work a little bit better. Again, you know with wrap it's never perfect. Yeah. You always have to do a bit of work. Right, so let's say that's ready for projection now. So we'll go up to the next level, level three maybe, and we will store a morph target. So we can always morph back to this if we need to. And just put it in the background, project. I'm gonna use 0 0.01, let's see how that works. Let's have a look and see what we got there. So uh, yeah, it's not looking too bad. Got some uh, craziness going on in the eyes, but we got those lids back nicely. So the the reason we saved the morph target was so we can now use the morph brush just to fix areas like this quite easily and quickly. So we can just sort of morph out any of those nasty little spikes that we've got. And um, just gonna have a look at the eye from the inside. Yeah, so we've got some craziness going on here. Or well, we've got some craziness anyway. So I wonder what the Sumex inner eyes look like. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, yeah, they're really deep. So yeah, we're probably gonna have to fix this bit manually because so I'm just going up and down the subdies here, just sort of trying to fix that eye bag a little bit. So that's our level three projection done. Um, so now we can go up a level and we'll go up to five on this, I think. So take them up to five. Again, you can see those little projection errors coming through. So we'll just fix those on level five while we're here. Just push them in with the sub project tool. There we go, now we're ready to do our level 5 projection. So again 0 0.01 and we'll just do project all. This could take 5 minutes. Okay. 
So now that we've fixed any projection errors, uh, we've got the cleaned model with our topology and some X sculpt. Now all that we need to do is switch on our layer with our skin details. So we can have a look here, no details, switch it on, and there's all our details back from our scan. And that's the reason why we saved that layer in that those details into a layer earlier, so that we could do all that work with the projection without destroying these details. And put the texture on, and there we have it. So now we've got a fully textured, fully detailed sculpt. And I'll just put on the shader so you can see everything. With 16K texture maps and all the sort of skin pore details from the actual scan itself. There is a little bit of a problem here with his thong that he was wearing, but um, you know, you'll have to sort of sculpt that out, but that's another video. I did actually do a version of him here where I've removed it and I basically just um, sort of, uh, you know, sculpted it out on the high sub tool and then just use a noise brush just to go over and create some noise where the, where the, um, the thong was. So that's easy enough to do, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Basically, I just want to show you how easy it is to texture a, a full body sculpt using a, a scan and retain all the details. So I hope this was useful. Um, if you've got any questions, just let me know either on Facebook or in the YouTube comments or in the comments on the blog, wherever you're watching this. Um, I'd love to hear from you. And if you guys do use this technique for any of your own characters, um, please feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to feature your artwork on our Instagram and Facebook pages. And just finally, I wanted to show you the Marmoset Toolbag render scene that I've created using the model that we've just been working on. Um, as I said before, I have actually cleaned up some of this area, so I've removed the, um, the thong that was on the guy um, and painted that, painted that out on the texture. Um, so I'm not going to go into this, how I did this on this video, but um, I have actually got another video on the blog, um, which you can go and look at, um, 3dscanstore.com, if you go into our blog. <clears throat> There's a rendering, lighting and shading in Marmoset Toolbag 4 tutorial which goes through everything that I've used here basically. How to set up the shaders, um, how to set up the eye shaders, the skin, um, lighting, everything. But in essence I have taken the eyes and the lenses and the hair from the scan that's on the store, from the Mail 12 scan, and just sort of put them onto this model and I've used the same shaders. Uh, that actually come with that model to, to render him. Um, skin has basically got, um, you know, like a roughness and uh, spec maps, all these come with the, the scan from the scan store. Um, but yeah, have a look at this tutorial if you want to learn more about this. But now I'll just show you some, some close-ups so you can see the level of detail. And this is using 8K maps, so the scan actually comes with 16K maps, so, you know, we can get a lot more than this if you're rendering in something like Arnold or you know a proper renderer rather than a real-time renderer like Marmoset. Not to say Marmoset isn't proper, you know, it's an amazing render engine. So there's some close-ups of the hands, so you can see we've got some some really really nice details on there. Let's have a look at the feet. There we go, there's some, some nice skin on the feet there. Lots and lots of nice skin details there. So yeah, that's just a just thought I'd add this in on the end just so you guys could see um, what you can actually do with these. So once again, yeah, I hope this is helpful. Um, and just let me know if you've got any questions. Cheers.